Welcome to part 3 of the Chemistry O-Level Lecture Series, Organic Chemistry. For part 3 of this video, we'll be touching on macromolecules, polymerization, and some examples of the molecules, of the polymers required in the O-Level syllabus. So before we begin, first let's touch on what is a macromolecule. So macro basically means huge, big, large. So a macromolecule is a large molecule made by joining together many, many, many small molecules. So over here, there's this simple diagram here. This is the polymer or the macromolecule. It can be 50 to 50,000 or so and so forth long, but it is made up of individual small units, which we call monomers. Okay, so when the monomers come together in the reaction called polymerization, we get the polymer. And polymers do not have sharp melting points. This means that they are mixture. Why? So if you remember this reaction here, 50 to 50,000 monomers long. So it can be 50, 51, 52, 53, so and so forth, 100, 1,000, 50,000. So when all this come together, we get actually a mixture of polymers. There's no way to control the exact length of the carbon of the, of the chain for the polymer. Hence, polymers are usually a mixture, and as a result, they do not melt at a definite melting point. We say they do not melt at a sharp melting point, so they melt over a range of temperatures. Two classes of polymers which you will need to know, addition polymer and condensation polymer. Addition polymerization is quite straightforward. Basically, addition, if 1 plus 1 gives you 2, basically you have 1 and 1 coming together to give you something like that. But of course, it is long, 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 really long. And you have a lot of this. So when they come together, they give you one single molecule, addition polymer. Condensation polymer is a little bit more complicated. It involves molecules coming together, the monomers coming together to form the polymer as usual, but with the loss of a small molecule. We will touch more on this later on. So addition polymer, unsaturated monomers. It is formed by unsaturated monomers. So what is unsaturated? It means it contains at least one carbon-carbon double bond. So these are alkenes. So when they come together, they form one large molecule, and that is the only product form. Nothing is lost, because when they add together, they all become one single thing. Nothing is lost during the process. So the first one which we must know is actually, is actually, guess, ethene, polyethene. There are various other kinds of addition polymers used to make various kind of plastics. If you look at the bottom, the bottom of your water bottle, you will see various signs and such. If you want to know more, go and find out more. You can Google them. Data is available quite readily on the internet. So each one represents a different kind of polymer. The one we, which you will need to know is called polyethene. So poly basically means many. Ethene is basically ethene, your C... 2H4. So when many ethene molecules come together, they give you polyethene. So how do you draw the reaction? It's quite straightforward. This is ethene. When many, 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 many come together, they give you the polyethene. How come it is all how come they are all single bonds here? It is because this double bond here has broken. So one electron has come over here, one electron has come over here. So when they come over here, they can bond to the next carbon of another ethene molecule. So actually, if you take a look, this is one, 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 one. So if I were to split this up, if I were to split this up, I have one single unit here, which actually, when replicated many, many times, gives me the entire polymer out. So what we call this is, we call this the repeating unit. So when I repeat this unit, I get the entire polymer chain out. So how do we represent the repeating unit? We put a bracket around and we write an N. So N of ethene gives me polyethene. So this is the repeating unit for polyethene. So when question says draw the structure of polyethene, you draw this one. When question says to draw the repeating unit, you draw this one. Do not confuse the two. 
Okay, they're not the same. The next polymer, the next class of polymer is called condensation polymers. There are, two, there, are, there are two condensation polymers which you will need to know. One is nylon and one is terylene. Okay, one is nylon and one is terylene. So basically, condensation polymers are formed when monomers join together to form a polymer with the elimination of a small molecule. With the elimination of small molecules. So the word condensation here, maybe the first word which comes to your mind, what's a small molecule? It could be water. Yes, water is correct. Other small molecules such as HCl can also be lost. We'll take a look later on. Two structures, nylon, terylene. Terylene, uh, terylene is used to make cloths. Go to your kitchen, take a look at the cloths. If it's not cotton, it's usually made of terylene. Nylon, you should have seen it before. So nylon is actually a condensation polymer. And if you take a look at the chemical reaction, nylon is made out of two different monomers. One is a dicarboxylic acid. One carboxyl group, two carboxyl groups. Dicarboxylic acid. The rectangle here represents a carbon chain which you need not know how to draw. Okay. The other monomer in nylon is a diamine. The NH2 here, this NH2 group is called amine group. So when two of these come together, it's called diamine. Di means two. So this rectangular box here again represents a carbon chain, which you need not know how to draw. And it is shaded because they are different. So make sure you shade them when you draw when you draw this equation out. So when they come together, the H and OH, it is lost as water. And you get this linkage here, which we call an amide linkage. Make sure you know that this is the amide linkage because they will ask you. So this nylon polymer, amide linkage, amide linkage, amide linkage, it is formed by a dicarboxylic acid monomer and a diamine monomer. So when they join together, they repeat. See, they repeat one set. This is one set. This is one more set and so and so forth. You get the very long nylon polymer. Sometimes, because the linkages are amide linkages, nylon is also called a polyamide. Many, many amide linkages making it up. So polyamide. Okay. So condensation, polyamide, synthetic, strong and light, made from two monomers. It is also known as polyamides because their monomers are joined by amide linkages. So this is the amide linkage. Okay. So if they were to say write a complete equation to show write the equation, write a balanced equation to show the formation of nylon, this is what you would write. The dicarboxylic acid, the diamine, and this is the repeating unit of the nylon of the nylon polymer and the water molecule that's lost. Okay, so this is the amide linkage. The next structure you will need to know is terylene. Terylene is a bit different. Terylene, ter terylene is also a condensation polymer, but the the linkage is the ester linkage. So it is for so for nylon it is between a dicarboxylic acid and a diamine. For terylene it is also dicarboxylic acid, but this is a diol. This is the hydroxyl group of the alcohol. If I have two of them, so instead of one, it is two, di. So di or di alcohol, di or. So when they come together, when they come together, this part here, this part here is lost as water. Okay? And as a result, we form the COO bond here, the ester linkage. So if you think fast enough, terylene is also called a polyester. Okay, so this is the repeating unit for terylene. Right? Condensation polymer, synthetic fiber, also known as polyester. 
because they are joined by ester linkages. Right, so let's quickly try checkpoint 6. Pause the video here. Continue when you are done. The structure of a monomer of perspex is shown here. So which one is correct? Is it a carbohydrate? No. Is it a hydrocarbon? No. There's oxygen present. So you're left with ester and polyester. Okay, now, polymer is formed by addition polymerization or condensation polymerization. Which one is it? So if you take a look here, if I were to draw out this part, this part here, CO2, represents COOCH3. So this part here is actually the ester linkage. So because the ester linkage is formed already, so if you recall the earlier question, the earlier part here, the ester linkage here is formed during the reaction. It is formed during the reaction. This is before the reaction, it is already formed, which means that there's no way it can be joined together by ester linkages. So you're just left with the double bond here. So this is something similar to ethene becoming polyethene. So we call this reaction addition polymerization. It is not condensation polymerization and what is the type of polymer? There's an ester, so this is the ester, right? So answer is B. Question number two, what is the molecular formula of the monomer? So this is the long polymer chain. If you look very carefully, you will see that this is a repeating unit. One, 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 same pattern, correct? So if you notice that it is all carbon, 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 it must have been formed from an addition polymerization reaction, which means that it must have come from an alkene. So you must draw in the carbon, carbon double bond. So how do we join the carbon, carbon double bond? It is basically just this. This is the structure of the repeating unit. So we put in the double bond. So this is the monomer. This is the structure of the monomer. One, two, three carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. So it is C three H six. Okay. So be very alert. Look out, if it's continuous carbon chain, it must have been formed from addition polymerization, which means that the original monomer must have been an alkene. Question number three, the structure of a polymer is shown here. What is meant by a polymer? It's basically a macromolecule made up of many, many monomers joined together through a reaction called polymerization. So let's name the monomer from which this polymer is made. So if this is the repeating unit, if I were to repeat this, I will have this and from here I can see that it is a continuous carbon chain which means that it must have been formed from an addition polymerization reaction which means that the original molecule is an alkene. So if I fold the electrons in, it will look like this. So this is a 1, 2, 3 carbon alkene. So this is called propene. C3H6, right? Give the empirical formula of this polymer. So what is the empirical formula of this polymer? We just have to count every single carbon and hydrogen here. So there's three carbons and there are one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens, which means that the empirical formula is CH2. So I can divide by three throughout. Give me 1 and give me 2. Calculate the percentage mass by carbon in this polymer. Very simply, very straightforward. I have 1 carbon, 2 hydrogens. So percent mass of carbon is equals to 12 divided by 12 plus 1 times 2 times 100%, which gives me 85.7%. Here I have another common plastic polymer. Draw the structure of the monomer from which it is made. If you observe, you will notice this is repeating. This is repeating. So continuous carbon chain, addition polymerization. Addition polymerization, which means that it must have come from an alkene. So my original monomer, I simply fold the bond in and I have this as my original monomer. Non 
non-biodegradable, what does it mean? It means it cannot be broken down by natural means like bacteria, microorganisms. So what does it cause? It pollutes the environment, land pollution. If this plastic is burned, a thick black smoke and a very acidic gas is produced. So if you look at the structure of the plastic again, what could, it, what could be the black smoke? Most likely it will be carbon, soot. And what is the very acidic gas? So structure again has HCl, HCl, HCl. So likely the acid gas will be HCl. It could be chlorine gas. It could be chlorine gas. So it could be HCl or chlorine gas. Question number five. Propene can be polymerized. Draw the structure of propene. Propene is like that. Three carbons. One double bond. You realize that this is actually quite hard for you to draw the polymer later on if you are required to. And you notice that only the double bond is used during polymerization. So actually, if you want to draw it this way, it is much neater. It is much neater when you want to draw your polymers because later on you will just fold the double bond out and then you just continue on, right? Yep, so both this and this ways are correct. What is the polymer form from polymerizing propene? It is simply polypropene. Many propenes. What is the type of polymerization? It is addition because it is alkanes. It's alkenes. And how do you draw the structure of the polymer formed? So again, this is propene. So if I unfold, unfold, the double bond, I would have a long chain. I have my CH3 here, and my H here, and my H here. So if I continue drawing everything in, I will get my polypropene. This is the structure of my polymer, polypropene. The curly line here basically represents a endless carbon chain or continuous carbon chain, which is not completed. You can't possibly draw 50,000 out, so we represent this by the curly lines here. Right. And with this, we have come to the end of the Organic Chemistry Lecture Series, three-part videos. Make sure you watch all three parts. If you have anything which, is not, which are not clear, please re-watch it again. Organic chem is quite a big topic in the O-levels, so you must be really, really clear in all the various reactions, addition, which is addition, which is condensation, what is an alkene, what is a carboxylic acid, how do you draw the ester out, uh, how do you draw some isomers of alkanes, for example. So if you are not clear about any of the parts, rewatch the videos. There are three parts. First part, alkane, alkenes. Part two is on carboxylic acids and alcohols, and the last part is on macromolecules. So, till next time, see you again, and happy organic chemistry.